the United States and Turkey can help the Palestinians and Israelis make this journey. Like the United States, Turkey has been a friend and partner in Israel's quest for security. And like the United States, you seek a future of opportunity and statehood for the Palestinians. So now, working together, we must not give in to pessimism and mistrust. We must pursue every opportunity for progress. As you've done by supporting negotiations between Syria and Israel. We must extend a hand to those Palestinians who are in need. While helping them strengthen their own institutions. We must reject the use of terror, and recognize that Israel's security concerns are legitimate. The peace of the region will also be advanced if Iran foregoes any nuclear weapons ambitions. Now, as I made clear in Prague yesterday, no one is served by the spread of nuclear weapons, least of all Turkey. You live in a difficult region and a nuclear arm race would not serve the security of this nation well. This part of the world has known enough violence. It has known enough. Hatred. It does not need a race for an ever more powerful tool of destruction. Now, I have made it clear to the people and leaders of the Islamic Republic of Iran. That the United States seeks engagement based on mutual interest and mutual respect. We want Iran to play its rightful role in the community of nations. Iran is a great civilization. We want them to engage in the economic and political integration that brings prosperity and security. But Iran's leaders must choose whether they will try to build a weapon or build a better future for their people.
so both Turkey and the United States support a secure end. United Iraq that does not serve as a safe haven for terrorists. I know there were differences about whether to go to war. There were differences within my own country, as well. But now we must come together as we end this war responsibly. Because the future of Iraq is inseparable from the future of the broader region. As I've already announced, and many of you are aware, the United States will remove our combat brigades by the end of next August. while working with the Iraqi government as they take responsibility for security. And we will work with Iraq, Turkey, and all Iraq's neighbors. to forge a new dialogue that reconciles differences and advances our common security. Make no mistake, though, Iraq, Turkey and the United States face a common threat from terrorism. That includes the Al-Qaeda terrorists who have sought to drive Iraqis apart and destroy. Their country. That includes the PKK. There is no excuse for terror against any nation. as president, and as a NATO ally. I pledge that you will have our support against the terrorist activities of the PKK or anyone else. These efforts will be strengthened by the continued work to build ties of cooperation between Turkey. The Iraqi government, and Iraq's Kurdish leaders. and by your continued efforts to promote education and opportunity and democracy for the Kurdish population here inside Turkey. Finally, we share the common goal of denying Al-Qaeda a safe haven in Pakistan or Afghanistan.
the world has come too far to let this region backslide, and to let Al-Qaeda terrorists plot further attacks. That's why we are committed to a more focused effort to disrupt, dismantle, and defeat Al-Qaeda. That is why we are increasing our efforts to train Afghans to sustain their own security. And to reconcile former adversaries. That's why we are increasing our support for the people of Afghanistan and Pakistan. So that we stand on the side not only of security, but also of opportunity and the promise of a better life. Turkey has been a true partner. Your troops were among the first in the International Security Assistance Force. You have sacrificed much in this endeavor. Now we must achieve our goals together. I appreciate that you've offered to help us train and support Afghan security forces. And expand opportunity across the region. Together, we can rise to meet this challenge like we have so many before. I know there have been difficulties these last few years. I know that the trust that binds the United States and Turkey has been strained. And I know that strain is shared in many places where the Muslim faith is practiced. So let me say this as clearly as I can, the United States is not, and will never be, at war with Islam. In fact, our partnership with the Muslim world is critical not just in rolling back the violent. Ideologies that people of all faiths reject, but also to strengthen opportunity for all its people. I also want to be clear that America's relationship with the Muslim community
the Muslim world, cannot, and will not, just be based upon opposition to terrorism. We seek broader engagement based on mutual interest and mutual respect. We will listen carefully, we will bridge misunderstandings, and we will seek common ground. We will be respectful, even when we do not agree. We will convey our deep appreciation for the Islamic faith. which has done so much over the centuries to shape the world including in my own country. The United States has been enriched by Muslim Americans. Many other Americans have Muslims in their families or have lived in a Muslim-majority country. I know. Because I am one of them. Above all, Above all we will demonstrate through actions our commitment to a better future. I want to help more children get the education that they need to succeed. We want to promote health care in places where people are vulnerable. We want to expand the trade and investment that can bring prosperity for all people. In the months ahead, I will present specific programs to advance these goals. Our focus will be on what we can do, in partnership with people across the Muslim world. to advance our common hopes and our common dreams. And when people look back on this time, let it be said of America that we extended the hand of friendship to all people. There's an old Turkish proverb, you cannot put out fire with flames. America knows this. Turkey knows this. There's some who must be met by force, they will not compromise. But force alone cannot solve our problems, 
and it is no alternative to extremism. The future must belong to those who create, not those who destroy. That is the future we must work for, and we must work for it together. I know there are those who like to debate Turkey's future. They see your country at the crossroads of continents, and touched by the currents of history. They know that this has been a place where civilizations meet, and different peoples come together. They wonder whether you will be pulled in one direction or another. But I believe here is what they don't understand. Turkey's greatness lies in your ability to be at the center of things. This is not where East and West divide this is where they come together. In the beauty of your culture, in the richness of your history, in the strength of your democracy, in your hopes. For tomorrow, I am honored to stand here with you to look forward to the future that we must. Reach for together and to reaffirm America's commitment to our strong and enduring friendship. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Barack Obama. Town Hall with Young Leaders of the United Kingdom Delivered April 23, 2016, Lindley Hall, Royal Horticulture Halls, London, England Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Have a seat. Have a seat. Well, hello. London. It is good to be back in the UK. Thank you, 
Khadija, for that wonderful introduction. I was saying backstage I'd vote for her for something. I want to thank are you. S. Ambassador, Matthew Barzon, for all the great work that he's doing. And it is wonderful to see all of you. I guess you all know why I came this week. It's no secret. Nothing was going. To stop me from wishing happy birthday to Her Majesty. And meeting George. I also just came from touring Shakespeare's Globe which is a good way to start your Saturday morning. Today is the 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. And as he once wrote, brevity is the soul of wit. So I will try to be brief on the front end so we have time for a conversation. These are some of the favorite things that I do when I travel around the world. Is just have a chance to meet with young people and hear from them directly. It's inspiring to me. It gives me new ideas and I think underscores the degree to which young people are rising up in every continent to seize the possibilities of tomorrow. Now, whenever I get together with leaders of the United States and UK. You hear a lot about the special relationship and the shared values and interests that bind us together. and the ways that our cooperation makes the world safer and more secure, and a more just and prosperous place. And all of that is true. We go back a pretty long way. The UK and the US. We've had our quarrels. There was that whole tea incident and and the British burned my house down. <laughs> 